There are some logistical changes happening to the Heartbeat of Lima annual fundraising event. And here in the studio, I have Patty Kennedy from Heartbeat of Lima, as well as Mike Spencer of Project Life Voice. And we're gonna talk about what's gonna be happening on October the 8th. Patty, we're not gonna have the big event in the Civic Center this year, and we've made some changes, right? That's correct. Um, why? So just to let you know, the change is basically, to, it's gonna happen right here in the studio and you're gonna be able to watch it here on TV 44 and online and we'll tell you more about that in uh, the days and weeks to come. But Patty, why did the board decide that we needed to make a change like this? I think one of the biggest things that we considered is, it is a very important fundraiser for us. We, we it, it really rely on the fundraiser. Um, we d with the COVID going on, we really want to take our donors into consideration and we really, as much as the funds are needed, we, we didn't want to put our needs before their safety or, or their health issues. So we, we just thought of going... Doing it virtually. virtually doing this it year. online, doing it live, and uh, we're excited to be involved in that. Patty, just tell me a little bit about Heartbeat in general and the, what it does for the community. Heartbeat is a pregnancy resource center. We opened up in 1973, so we were one of the earliest centers to open up. Um, today we have grown and developed. We offer um, free pregnancy testing. Our satellite office um, offers ultrasounds so we can help women get started on their prenatal care, help them um, get directed toward a physician if they need help with that, and have a healthy pregnancy. We have parenting classes. We reach out to our clients. We're, we're encouraging them to parent their children or for adoption. So we feel it's very important to work with them. So in our parenting classes, they can um, begin during their pregnancy and they can continue with those until their child is three years old. Mm -hmm. So we want to help them build good, healthy life skills and parenting skills. And you have locations both in Lima and in Putnam County. That is correct. We have two locations in Lima. Our West Elm is our main office. In downtown we have the satellite office where the ultrasounds are held. And our Ottawa, Ottawa office is and I think you've got to be one of the most ongoing, hardworking people that I know. Because, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, but you are there for those. You're there for those ladies and those families whenever needed. You know, this is not a job. This is a passion. This is this is lives. It it's is a life. passion. It is a true passion. Everybody who works with us has a love for those women and children and the fathers that we work with. That's great, that's great. Well, Mike Spencer is joining us and he is with Project Life Boys and he is going to be the keynote speaker for the event, which is October the 8th, 6 p.m. live on TV 44 and it will also be live streamed. Mike, uh, we are excited to have you a part of this event and give us a little background on yourself. Sure. Not mm -hmm. always pro-life. No, <clears throat> I, I was actually on the other side of this issue many years ago. I, I um, sort of in my late in my high school and into my early adult years sort of defaulted to a kind of a classic so to speak pro-choice view um, but what happened was I, I came to faith in Christ when I was 21 and um, for about eight or nine months um, after having to come to faith in Christ I was attending a church there I grew up in the Detroit area and um, was attending a church there and I walked in on Wednesday night and uh, not knowing what was uh, planned for the, uh, the evening service but I walked out about an hour and a half later forever changed mm -hmm. because I saw for the first time with my own eyes what abortion did to little girls and boys and I couldn't believe it. So that was a real watershed experience for me and I, I left the church that night uh, forever changed. Mm -hmm. And I went on to pastor churches for uh, 23 years, served in different pastoral roles for 23 years and uh, this has just been a growing burden of mine for many, many years now. So after 23 years, you left the pastorate to pursue yeah. pro-life ministry full-time. What was stirring inside of you sure. that entire time yeah, to well, make such a change? Yeah, and it was a big change. I, I loved being a pastor. I absolutely, I, I, I tell people I fell in love with Jesus, Barbara, my wife, and the body of Christ all in the month of September of 1983 when I came to faith. <laughs> so I loved the church. I loved my, some of my closest friends are pastors. I love pastors. But I did feel a real burden that um, in the Catholic, Protestant, and Evangelical communities, um, while most of those churches would say they're pro-life, very few were actually doing anything about it as far as really equipping their congregations and speaking up for those um, who have no voice and, and, and leading those who have been wounded by abortion to forgiveness through Christ. And I really felt like, you know, and I, and I continue to feel that many, many churches have been silent. So I had this burden that I really wanted to give more attention to that. So that, in a nutshell, that's what 
what moved me. So you've been speaking for almost a decade now. You've been traveling yeah. and speaking that message. Yeah. And what kind of response are you seeing from pastors? Who, when, yeah. Once you can say, there, there's hurting out there. Right. But healing can happen. That's right. Well, I think a lot of pastors are just unaware of the fact that this really is a gospel issue. This isn't some political issue. This is, it is a political issue, but it's first and foremost a moral spiritual issue that's been politicized. And so one of the things that I do when I do have the opportunity, which I frequently do to speak to pastors, groups, luncheons and so forth, is to help them see their response to abortion, not merely as a burden, and it is that, let's be honest, but to actually see it as a gospel opportunity. And the response that I get is of course varied, but I frequently see pastors just grateful for, for the knowledge and the tools to know how to address this very sensitive issue that has been politicized um, from their pulpits in a way that is bold and courageous and yet redemptive and gracious and, and compassionate to those who've been, been hurt by abortions. Redemptive, gracious, compassionate. Such important yeah. words, especially when you talk about women and, and not just women, men, because dads right. too, right. who are scared who don't know what to do, might not be having support from their families. Mm. Um, so thinking of all that, why are organizations like Heartbeat of Lima so important in your opinion? Yeah, well, Heartbeat of Lima and ministries like them are on the front lines of what I think is the defining moral issue of our day, and that is the legal destruction of children through abortion. They're not only on the front lines uh, of this battle, but Patty and her team are in many cases the last line of defense for young moms and, as you said, young dads. Um, who are going to make decisions that potentially will alter their, their entire lives and, and in many cases leave them with a lifetime of regret. Um, moreover, they're the last line of defense for those who have no voice, for the unborn children whose lives hang in the balance. And um, so I, in a nutshell, that's, that's why a ministry like this is so incredibly important. And that leads us to what we're going to be doing right here in our studio mm -hmm. on October the 8th live, we're going to have the annual uh, fundraising event for Heartbeat of Lima right here and you're going to be asked, invited to watch it. We hope you will watch it. Um, so that brings us to, you're going to be here on October the yeah. 8th and what, got any ideas what you're going to be sharing yet? Yeah, well I don't want to tip my hat too much, <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, the case uh, for the unborn by making the case for Heartbeat of Lima, that being that, that this isn't just some extra ministry out there, you know, some extra business out there. This is a ministry, again, on the front lines. And, and I want those that are participating that night to see their role in this. Because Patty and her team need that kind of support. They need not just the moral support, they need the financial support as well to do the things that God has called them to do. And that is to care for these young moms, to provide counseling and the parenting classes and, and the boutique, which if your viewers haven't seen that, they need to call and schedule an appointment to go in and see this. It's, it's phenomenal what they are doing there for, for these young ladies and these young babies, these small babies. But um, So I'm going to be making the case that, that the unborn child is indeed our neighbor, uh, uh, biblically speaking, and that we can show, we can demonstrate through the science of human embryology that from the moment of conception or fertilization, the unborn child is a distinct living and whole human being with its own DNA, its own gender separate from the mother's potentially, if it's a little boy, a blood type and a race that are potentially different than the mother's. And then also to make the case that not only is the unborn child a human being, but to make the case that it is a whole human person, mm -hmm. that, that these little ones really are our unborn neighbors. And so whether, whether um, you know, I mean, the lesson of the Good Samaritan, the parable, you know, the parable of the Good Samaritan, the morals of that story really is that, that we have a moral duty to our neighbors, whether our neighbor has been beaten and abandoned in a ditch, or denied legal protection and abandoned in the womb. And so I really wanna make that case that night that this is the defining moral issue of our day and every professing Christian, everyone who cares about human dignity and human equality should be in on this battle. You know, Jennifer, one of the things that is often said about centers like Heartbeat of Lima in Putnam County is, or really it's said about the pro-life community at large, is that we really don't care about these young moms and we don't really don't care about babies after they're born. And nothing could be further from the truth. And ministries like Heartbeat of Lima in Putnam County are evidence of the fact that that's not true. It's interesting that when you go into their center or other centers like them, and by the way, there are almost 3,000 of these centers throughout the United States, and not one of them has a cash register. And that's telling. All of their services are free. And they really are boots on the ground. They are in the trenches with these young parents who are, in many cases, facing uh, you know, uh, feelings and, and that, that they're trapped. Mm -hmm. 
that they're cornered by life's circumstances. But the real friend of women and the real friend of the unborn are centers like Heartbeat of, Putnam, of, of Lyme in Putnam County. We want to remind you to, well, we want to ask you to put this on your calendar, October the 8th, 6 p.m., to be watching. Also ask that you'd be praying between now and then. Because like Patty said, this is a completely different setup. Everything's different than the way Heartbeat is used to doing things, but it's the same God. And it is the same God who loves those, those babies so very much. And so we just thank you for your prayers, and thank you for attending on October the 8th at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm.